back in the podcast. So happy to be joined by Mojo Raleigh. Now, for many of you who listen to this podcast, it's kind of rare. You wonder, oh, Mojo Raleigh, is he a new uh, tight end for the, uh, for the Cardinals? <laughs> uh, no, actually, Mojo is a uh, WWE star, and uh, the WWE and Peacock uh, have a new partnership. The WWE Network is going to be streamed on Peacock. Uh, it'll launch in March. Uh, but we are going to discuss a little football and a little bit of wrestling. I, I guess the first thing I would ask you, Mojo, is that, you know, it's it's so interesting, sort of the cross between football and wrestling. It's almost like so many guys who play football talk about, you know, WWE. Um, they talk about UFC, MMA. They talk, you know, they talk about these sports that it's almost like they wish they were in. And so I, I, I just wonder, as a guy who formerly played football, is there a lot of similarities between the games? Uh, you know what? Absolutely. From a physical perspective, it's just that, you know, wear and tear, constant grind of always preparing for something big that's right around the corner. So, I mean, it's a very, very physical business. I mean, for us, I mean, at least before all this, well, you know, we were doing shows four days a week, you know, with no off season. So just that constant grind of always working towards a goal with the, uh, the year end goal being WrestleMania for us, whereas it's the Super Bowl for, uh, for football, it's, it's, it's a very similar trek and journey and uh, just one you can have a lot of fun with along the way. So let's just, let's talk about your, your football life for a second. You played college football at Maryland. You're an undrafted free agent. You signed, I think, 2009 with the Packers, and you played in the preseason with them. How much did you want to make the Green Bay Packers in 2009? Oh, man, that, that was a tough one. You know, coming in, it was the first year that they went uh, from that 4-3 to a 3-4. So we kind of had an abundance of uh, – D Lyman combined that with the fact that BJ Raji was taken in the first round at, uh, you know, the position they wanted me to play. I thought I was going to come in more as an end, but I guess uh, I was more suited for a nose guard. I mean, it was, it was kind of an uphill battle, but to be honest, I'm really proud of the way I played in the preseason. And I think I really made the most uh, with the reps I got and, you know, it was just a tough situation. So, uh, you know, luckily I was fortunate enough to, get another crack in the league um, with Arizona before, unfortunately I had a pretty, uh, pretty brutal injury there. And then after that one, you know, I was, I was healing up and I came back and I started talking with a couple more teams. And then that's when I had this opportunity with the WWE and ultimately decided to, uh, to change it up and, and come over here to the WWE and start over. And, I got to say, as much as I love football and how big of a part of my life it was, I'm very happy with the decision I made because <laughs> I thought football was for me, but the WWE really is for me. What was the uh, – What? Uh, tell me a little bit about your time in camp with the Packers. That would have been year two with of Aaron Rodgers. You remember Rodgers very well from that – from your time there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, playing for Green Bay was a – was a dream come true. You know, I really don't, not one of those guys that gets like starstruck a lot, but man, the, my first step on Lambeau field, <laughs> man, that was something special, you know, got <laughs> chills and goosebumps and, and all that. And Aaron, man, what a, what a great guy. You know, we used to joke around and practice all the time. Cause even though, you know, I was an undrafted rookie and, you know, one of those guys that's, you know, fighting for just like the last spot on the roster. I feel like the team really accepted me, especially, uh, just my energy level and the intensity I brought to practice every day. And it was kind of like, you know, a running, dro running joke with, uh, with me and Aaron, you know, cause I'd always get up in his grill and practice and, ah, you know, just kind of screaming <laughs> in his face, letting him know if it wasn't practice, he'd be on the dirt. So it was kind of like, you know, a little running joke we'd have where he would extend it past the practice field. So anytime he'd see me coming down a hallway, you know, maybe he'd be hiding around the corner, even if I was in the stall in the bathroom, Second I opened the door, there's there. No! Nah! <laughs> my face like I would do to him. So, man, what a great guy and just one of the greatest of all time to do it and just being able to uh, spend a little bit of time with him 
and the entire Packers organization was just something that I'll treasure forever. It was unbelievable. How'd you get to be good friends with Gronk? And, uh, it, you know, because I, I, I think Gronk is one of these guys who seems to have a lot of friends in all different walks of life. So tell me about you and Rob Gronkowski. So I actually played college ball at Maryland with two of his brothers. So uh, Dan and Chris Gronk played there with me. Um, we got to be really good friends there. Um, Dan was always like, I always like to say he's the real person of the five brothers. You know, <laughs> the rest of them are just complete maniacs and lunatics. Dan's one of the ones you can actually have a real conversation with and, and talk about normal <laughs> things and not lose his interest. So, you know, back then I used to think Dan was kind of the crazy one. And then I met the rest of the family and yeah. <laughs> I mean, those guys take the cake, but it was just kind of like a similar energy, just a bunch of, you know, crazy guys that loved working out and laying it all on the line and, you know, partying our faces off, break dancing, all that stuff. So, you know, it was kind of just a friendship from day one that we knew was going to last through the years. And, and at this point, you know, I've had so many, you know, individual stories and occurrences with all the bros. I don't even know which ones, which ones I'm closest with. <laughs> So, have you been at all surprised at how good Rob got to be at football, and and now he's like one of the 100 best voted one of the 100 best football players in NFL history? Does that kind of blow you away? Uh, it does, but it doesn't. I mean, it's hard to see a guy when he's in high school, no matter how good he is, and expect him to become. Yeah as great of an athlete and as great of a, a person and representative as he's, as he's been. But I wouldn't say I'm shocked by it either. Cause that guy was always an animal. The things that he could do on the field were unbelievable. And then just combine that with how he is off the field. I mean, the guy's a lunatic. <laughs> I mean, party and some of the stuff we would see was just unspeakable, but also just how tough he is, you know? And one thing that, one thing that stands out to me about, you know, not only him, but the whole family is just they never really get down. They never really get upset. You know, barely anything bothers them. So, you know, it kind of translates to the field after a bad play, after a bad hit. You know, they just kind of get up, shrug it off, laugh it off and, and keep trucking. Whereas some players might, you know, let that enter their mind and then, you know, kind of ruin the rest of the game or even the season for them. You don't really have that uh, with Gronk ever. You know, it seems like the guy's always on. So, you know, it, it, the world, is it, is it a lot different preparing for uh, a football season versus preparing for, let's say, a wrestling season? Well, absolutely. And the reason for that is that there simply is no wrestling season. So we're 52 weeks a year, no off season. You know, we, we, we don't get time off. So we're, we're always on the grind. And that's really the biggest adjustment is – especially when you're training or you're doing your conditioning and your cardio and even your weightlifting, like you have to adjust for, for no off season. Whereas in football, you know, maybe you just suck it up for another month or two and then you, you got the off season to heal up and recover and those kind of nagging injuries that just would never go away. You take care of them then, but for us, there's, there's no time for that. So, you know, that kind of factors into your, your workouts, your, your rehab. It's almost like you have to do way more rehab uh, than you would have and you know adjusting for all the travel even though that isn't as relevant now since we're you know pretty much doing our, our one tv show a week depending on what brand you're on you know before it was kind of gym show drive gym show drive five days a week you know on the road constantly not knowing what's what's more brutal the travel or, or the actual in-ring uh performances so it it can get kind of crazy it's it that's really the the main adjustment you know let alone the fact that you know, we're not preparing for, you know, you do a play and then maybe you get 30 seconds off, rinse and repeat, and then you're off when the other side of the ball's up for us. You know, we're in there for 5, 10, 20, 60 minutes straight with no rest, just a constant beating. So you just got to, you got to be ready for it. And, you know, and then how many, how many days off before the next, before the next event? Uh, on a typical schedule, we would have shows every day in different cities, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You fly home on Tuesday, so you're home that second half of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then a flight uh, first thing in the morning. You know, then sometimes maybe we go, 
you know, twice a year international shows where we're, we're abroad and we're doing a different show every day for two or three weeks with no days off. So um, it, it can get tricky. You know, you're not maybe booked on all of those shows. And and that's kind of the thing with this business is, man, you get prepared to be ready for anything because <laughs> you you kind of get prepared for being unprepared. You know, you're always on. You never know. You you know, you could be out to dinner with the family and that phone rings. You might have to hop on a flight immediately. So you just got to be ready for that. Um, I wonder, you know, I don't I don't know the schedule, but I know that you guys have a really big deal coming up the Royal Rumble. And that that sort of isn't that like the first step on the road to WrestleMania? Describe what describe what that is and uh and and how big a deal that is in your world um you know royal rumble i'd probably say is the second biggest night of the entire year for us right behind wrestlemania and like you said it's the first step on the road to wrestlemania which will be have 100 percent of our focus for the next you know two three months uh the royal rumble is just awesome and it's one of one of those things where everybody knows what the rumble is and is familiar with it and just a really cool match you win the rumble you get the chance to uh headline wrestlemania and i mean just what a cool pay-per-view i mean that was one of the ones that as a young kid that i was all geared up for as as a kid you know that that countdown 10 9 8 who's coming out next the buzzer hits and then you get you know any one of our superstars current or former anybody anybody could come through that curtain after uh after that buzzer hits and you know that's what makes it so exciting you know guys that haven't you haven't seen in a year because of injury they come back or you know guys that you thought were retired like edge last year coming back that that rocked the world in a pretty big way um it's just really exciting and it's really cool and engaging and the fans get into it and just you know, one of those events with all the pageantry and everything surrounding it. It's just, I can't hype it up anymore. It kind of speaks for itself. But yeah, it's a its a very, very big day for us Sunday. And just the entire WWE universe is all hyped up about it. You seem like you're probably not sad very much. <laughs> Look at you. Look at can't you. be. No time for that in this business, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, we'll end with this. What are you going to do on Super Sunday? Where will you be uh, when the Super Bowl is being played between Kansas City and Tampa? Well, I'll be in Tampa. I live in Orlando, so it's right down the street. I got my jersey uh, picked out, you know, and who knows what's going to happen because, you know, Rob Gronk stole my uh, 24-7 title at Mania last year, so I still got a bone to pick with uh, with him at some point. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I might personally cost the bucks the super bowl this year even though i'm rooting for him because i might have to spear gronk in the end zone or at the one yard line right before he (laughs) scores as some payback i don't i don't know what's gonna happen but i know i'll be in tampa and i will be supporting my boy until that moment (laughs) but it's gonna be a good day i mean what what a what a past couple games we had i mean tampa bay and green bay was was unbelievable it hurt my heart a little bit watching as a as a former Packer, take on my uh, my best friend. But, hey, the Bucks got the dub, and I'm with them. Can you believe Tom Brady's doing this at age 43? On a brand-new team. Uh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, everyone had their doubts, but how do you question the GOAT now after joining a, a new franchise and taking them all the way? It's, whoo, whoo, and he's still on. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, Mojo Raleigh, really great talking to you. Welcome to the Peacock and NBC family. It's really nice to meet you virtually. Hopefully someday we'll meet and we can shake hands and you won't pin me. Thank you. (laughs) An honor to chat with you, sir. Much appreciated. Let's go, baby. It's Mania (laughs) season and Super Bowl season. Let's go. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.